Well, you know, we could think about this from an evolutionary biology perspective, I think, for a moment or two that might be interesting. So I know that the, the rates of psychopathy appear to vary between about 1% and 5% cross-culturally. And so I talked to David Buss about various theories about that, um, that percentage. And so the first observation is, it's actually not very effective to be a power mad psychopath, right? So 95 to 97% of people aren't. And the reason for that is it's really not a very effective strategy. You even have to run away from yourself eventually if you're a psychopath. And they tend to have itinerant lifestyles because people caught on to their narcissistic Machiavellianism sooner or later and then can identify them. Now, it might be more useful, biologically speaking, to be a predatory psychopath than to be someone who's so depressed and isolated that they never go out of the house. So you could think about it as a, a strategy of, a reproductive strategy that doesn't always culminate in failure. And that's especially true because young women are less likely to be able to distinguish psychopathic predators from confident and competent males. So, okay, so you, you open up a window for psychopathy, and then the window's opened up too because most people are cooperative and productive and generous, at least in the main. But what that means is that a small percentage of people can capitalize on that by mimicking it. And the psychopaths mimic that by being confident and assertive and appearing competent, even though they're predators and, and, and parasitic in their fundamental orientation. Now, those people, that 1% to 5%, present an unbelievable constant danger to the integrity of societies, right? If it doesn't take that many people to destabilize a complex society, and certainly 3% is more than enough. And normally, the psychopaths are kept under some regulatory control because they get identified and isolated and, and punished. But I don't think that happens online. And so, it's, I don't know to what degree, the, the, look, psychopaths don't learn from punishment very well at all, and they don't learn from threat very well at all. But online, all of that's been removed. There's nothing but a field of opportunity for predatory psychopaths. And so I wonder to what degree virtualizing communication and opening up this hypothetically democratic front has actually magnified the degree to which our societies are susceptible to disruption by Machiavellian psychopaths. That is absolutely possible because, yeah, I mean, there's there's the trolls and all of those folks who, um, you know, get into those situations. They too often absolutely get away with that. Um, you know, I think some people might argue that, well, they might get lots of negative comments and, you know, sometimes they do get punished or, or canceled, but it's not usually the way it goes because, yeah, they have a lot of tricks. Um, they can they can be charming and they can fake their way through it, and they do often get away with a lot, just partially because things are so unregulated. It's the wild, wild west. Well, they can also generate multiple identities. So even if one of their identities gets published, punished, well, first of all, they're not likely to be very affected by negative feedback to begin with, especially not of the psychological sort because the typical psychopath doesn't give a damn what you think like they might they might react with some degree of surprise if you actually hit them but if you just said something that might disturb a person with with normal uh conscience let's say the psychopath is going to brush that off and so true 